What is up? Looks like we are live. Guys, how y'all doing tonight? There is nobody in here quite yet, but it looks like we have a thumbs up already on the video. So really appreciate you, whoever it is. Um, it is Saturday night, September 5th, Labor Day weekend. And I uh, thought I would hop on and show you some sweet deals that I copped from uh, Omnia Fishing, which is a place that um, I don't usually shop. In fact, I maybe have only shopped there once before. Riley, doing pretty good. Thank you for asking. Uh, sorry about my face. A little bit messed up. Justin, what up, bro? Congratulations again on winning the giveaway. Uh, pretty cool deal. I wanted to, to mention that you actually were not the first winner. But you'd be surprised to find out that there are a lot of people who don't follow the rules and, um, you know, on Instagram either aren't tagging two people in one comment or aren't following me. And um, same deal goes on YouTube. Sometimes the people who are picked as winners are not subscribers. And um, so anyway, congratulations. Good for you, man. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and run through these baits one more time that are yours. And I'm going to ship out to you uh, here in the next few days. Um, as you guys know, I don't really have uh, the ability to drive for the next couple months. to get a ride from my wife um, probably on Monday or Wednesday at the earliest to go ahead and ship these baits out to you. But bait number one is this Mega Bass Dark Sleeper. And then in here is some terminal tackle, right? A few really sweet rigs for you to go ahead and toss around, as well as um, three packs of soft plastics. So I'm just going to quickly run through these again since uh, I didn't do so in my live stream last. I'm going to re rig these for you because I don't want to mess up your soft plastics. But first is this pack of. Zoom Magnum Finesse Worms, and I've talked about these before. Um, this is one of my favorite stick baits. Straight up uh, for, for a wacky rig, for the Nico rig, for shaky heads. Very versatile bait here that's underrated. Um, the, the Trick Worm is probably one of the most popular baits that is made by Zoom, but the Magnum Finesse Worm is really underrated. So what you're going to do is take these tungsten nail weights, I've included two of them. So one is this 1 16th, and one is this 1 32nd that will control the rate of fall. And um, you know, depending on the thickness of cover that you're fishing, you're going to use either this size 1 BMC Nico hook or this size 1 aught weedless Nico hook. And um, that is rig number one. Rig number two is the Zika or Zika rig, depending on how appropriate you want to be in pronouncing the rig. And this is a homemade jig rig or Zika rig using an owner 2 aught all purpose EWG style hook and a 3 16 ounce cylinder style drop shot weight by Tung Swagger Tungsten. Uh, I'm using stainless steel split rings and swivels here, so you're not going to get line twists like you would with a typical drop shot. And um, using the standard split ring, you you can change out the style or size of hook and the style and weight, um, size of weight on there. And you're going to use this awesome and very underrated worm that I've talked about a bit recently. This is the Kytec Easy Shaker in the 4.5 um, it does a remarkable job on a drop shot or a jika rig for remaining horizontal in the water column so really cool deal there um, the difference between this and the drop shot like i said is using the swivel you're not going to get the line twist and then with this um with the the drop shot weight hanging behind here the fish are not going to get the leverage that they would with, say, a standard Texas rig. And, um, yeah, you get you get a little bit more action out of the bait, uh, kind of like you would 
uh, a swing head or something like that. So really awesome setup, the Jika rig, the Nico rig, and lastly is the Tokyo rig. Everybody has probably heard of the Tokyo rig by now. This is very similar to the Jika rig, but these are pre-made by VMC. They do not come with weights. They do come with hooks. This is the four-aught size. Comes with a welded split ring there, so you cannot change the hook. But it doesn't come with weights on it, so you go ahead and put whatever weights you want. And I included two tungsten weights. These are each three-eighths of an ounce. And so opposing weights allow for this to slide in, in and out of keys. This is a punching setup that you're going to, to match up with this Strike King Magnum Rage Menace Grub, which is an awesome bait new to the market uh, in 2019. Uh, came out of iCast last year. So I prefer the EWG style hook with this bait specifically, though, of course, you could use the newer uh, flipping hook, Tokyo Rig, but I prefer the flipping hook with like a Rage Bug instead of the Menace Grub. So um, anyway, that is what is included in the giveaway this month. And congratulations, Justin. Hope you really enjoy the new items. And, uh, and I'll get those out to you later this week. So there are eight people in here, five thumbs up, nine people in here. What is up, guys? Hope you're having a good Saturday night. My Nuggets are playing right now and starting to lose the lead that they had was commanding in the first half. So I kind of don't want to watch right now. I'm nervous about that. And uh, let me go ahead and just apologize about this mark on my face. I was in Colorado Springs with my family the last few days, um, kind of in the middle of nowhere in the wilderness, had a blast, um, but we were cooking s'mores for dessert almost every night. And uh, I, we were joking around about how some people prefer to let their marshmallows uh, catch on fire and then blow them out, really toast them good. And, and I did that. And as I'm blowing it out, a piece of marshmallow caught me in the face and burned me pretty good. So that's unfortunate. Ron Holly in the building. What's up, dude? Hope you're having a good evening. Well, good for you, Justin. Hopefully, um, some of these baits, especially the Nico and the uh, the Jika rig, will do you quite well with smallmouth. But of course, you can use all of those baits for largemouth. And like I said, they're very versatile, soft plastics. You can rig them any which way you want. Uh, specifically. The Magnum Finesse Worm is awesome on a shaky head and a wacky rig, um, in addition to a Nico rig. So great for largemouth there. And the Magnum uh, Rage Menace Grub is wicked on a Texas rig, on the back of a jig, on a swing head. You can do a ton of different things with it. So hope you enjoy. Aaron's Outdoor, what's up, man? Yeah, it has been a while since you've been able to hop on these streams. So good to see you in here. Hope you're having a good night. Everything Pro, how do you buy them? How do you buy what, man? Uh, what what item are you talking about in particular? Um, some of those were homemade. Some of them are not. You know, the, the Tokyo rig itself, these are pre-made. You can buy them uh, from most tackle shops. The Nico rig stuff uh, all comes separate. BMC makes the hooks. And, you know, these weights, these tungsten nail weights are specifically from Bass Pro. XPS makes them and, uh, and they're relatively affordable for tungsten. And then um, the Jika rig, like I said, is homemade. And I can show you guys how to make those. Uh, you know, I've, I've got a handful of them here that I've put together. You can make them with cheaper components so like this one here I've with um with a lead weight and an offset worm hook that's a four aught worm hook i've got let's see here i'm flinging stuff around um the other jika rigs i'm not sure where i've got 
setting right now. But anyway, we could, I'll show you a tutorial on that another time, okay? But you just let me know. You retracted that comment, Everything Pro, so let me know what it is that you're looking for. Aaron's Outdoor says, I love the Magnum Finesse worm for a wacky rig. Me too, dude. Almost always use them over a Sanko. Right on, man. Yeah, the only thing that I'm not including in this giveaway that you are going to want to use, Justin, is an O-ring. Okay? Just a standard wacky rig tool like this guy right here. Don't forget to use an O-ring. Slide that up over roughly the middle or maybe 40% uh, of the way up the bait. Uh, what I like to do is just test where the uh, the action is most wacky, which is pretty close to the middle, and uh, and put the, the O-ring there, and then instead of rigging it wacky, you're going to rig it vertically with the hook point up. That is going to give you the best chance of hooking the fish somewhere along the roof of the mouth, okay? So anyway, um, appreciate you asking, Justin. I am feeling okay, but to be honest with you, I am wearing my back brace right now. Um, you know, it, it comes and goes, the discomfort. And so, you know, I did a fair amount of yard work today. We just got back from our trip yesterday. And um, so a little bit mixed, but appreciate it. Feeling better mentally, that's for sure, but physically about the same. I'm not on any painkillers or anything like that, so it's just kind of day-to-day. -day. But um, family's doing pretty well. Thank you very much for asking. Um, in fact, all my family's doing quite well. My girls are well. The reason that I was about 20 minutes late in hopping on here is that my four-year-old was struggling to fall asleep tonight. So uh, she literally just woke me up after I made the, the quick thumbnail. Um, or took that picture and was about to start streaming, I could hear her upstairs calling my name. So I had to run up there and tuck her back in and scratch her back to help her fall asleep. So Nixie Morales, good evening, man. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining in. Looks like we only uh, have four people in here at the moment. A few people just dropped out. Eight thumbs up, though. Really appreciate you guys and your support. I do want to open this package, but I was hoping that we'd have a few more people in here right now. And it looks like we are losing viewers for some reason right now. So um, just do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. If you haven't already, it looks like we're up to 10. So right on. Thank you, guys. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and open this package. Like I said, Omnia Fishing is an online retailer based out of, I want to say, Minnesota. And uh, Ron Hall, you sure that wasn't the missus, Tyler? Yeah, man. The missus is working tonight. She is at the hospital on the north side of town. So, uh, no, she worked last night. She's working tonight. It's part of uh, our current situation. She, she's working weekends pretty much all the time. And that's why you see me streaming on Fridays or Saturdays the majority of the time. Uh, she is picking up an extra shift on Monday night. And so I may or may not stream then as well. So talk about some deals. This is uh, soft plastics specifically last weekend in advance of the Labor Day weekend. Omnia was offering 25% off of all soft plastics. And I told you guys that in my live stream last week. Not sure if any of you guys took advantage of that or not. But Omnia Fishing is doing um, another deal this weekend. I'm not quite sure what it is. I think you got to spend a hundred bucks to get 25 off. So, uh, pretty good deal. But Tackle Warehouse is doing a 15% off deal on pretty much everything across the board. So I've I've got a bunch of stuff in my cart there, and we'll probably pull the trigger on a few things. So, right on. Thank you, Aaron, for that thumbs up. Justin says I'm kind of in a similar situation. Was diagnosed in February with multiple Sclerosis, MS, I am so sorry to hear that, man. Struggling with some serious depression. I hear you. Glad you're feeling a little bit better at least. Um, I'm sorry, man. I feel for you and will definitely be praying for you, Justin. So I'm sorry to hear that, that you've got MS. I know how difficult that can be. I know a number of people um, who have it. And um, I'm, just, I'm really sorry to hear that, man. Riley says I picked up 
a new sport besides fishing. I'm doing powerlifting for my high school. So let's go. Right on, Riley. Good for you. That should be really cool. I'd be curious to know how uh, how that is as a high school sport uh, moving forward after you've tried it out a little bit. So it looks like Aaron knows what the deals are. Probably going to do a tackle warehouse order as well. Yeah, we've got till Monday evening. So um, only reason to pull the trigger sooner than that is that some things are going to go out of stock. Uh, if I had to guess. So I don't quite want to let you guys know right this minute what it is that uh, I've got in my cart, but maybe we'll talk about that later on this. Week. Nixie says, love the tackle warehouse. Who doesn't, man? So here we go. Going to open this package right now and show you guys what I picked up from Omnia Fishing. Pretty good deals, too. All right. Now, I love this about Omnia. I do remember. I've actually placed an order with them before. So not only do they include the invoice yeah, and, and show you what it is that you bought, of course, just like anywhere else. Uh, looks like I spent about oh, 60 bucks. Oh, minus the 25%. So I spent like 55 bucks, not too bad. But this is really cool. Handwritten letter. Hi, Tyler. Hope you got out a bunch before the summer is over. I hope you get out a bunch before the summer is over. Enjoy the baits. We appreciate the order. Thanks. From Pete. Really like that touch, little handwritten letter. That is awesome. So I'm just going to go through um, from top to bottom instead of trying to go down the list. But let's get into it. Um, Justin says, and you're in my family's prayers as well. Thanks, bro. Really appreciate that. All right, guys. First up is... X Zone Lures Smalley Smasher? No, Finesse Slammer. Gosh, I don't have many X Zone Lures baits um, until now. I've got their uh, Ned Zone, which is their Ned Rig bait, and I absolutely love it and recommend it uh, for a couple of reasons. I, I love the colors, and I love the buoyancy, and just the shape of the bait. It's got a bulbous tail. So, this right here is the Finesse Slammer, which is a three and a quarter inch drop shot bait. This in the big limit color. So tons of action. This is a hand poured drop shot bait. Let me see if I can slow it down so it'll focus just a little bit for you. As you can see, the color is uh, very natural. It's got like a uh, greenish top and a purple hue to the bottom it's got a flat bottom that tail just won't stop wiggling i can't keep it straight it's kind of segmented and um x zone a lot of their baits are like this but you got some flake in the top of the bait looks like some green gold purple and uh black pepper and these come 10 to a pack and they're in a clamshell packaging. So I really like and admire that because in this day and age, that is pretty rare. And um, as a result, I put a ton of my drop shot baits into uh, Plano containers. So like, let me show you, for example, here's a lot of the drop shot baits that I use. I've got like the the Zoom Swamp Crawler. I've got the Kitek Easy Shakers that Justin is getting a couple packs of. Got that in two colors. I've got the Kitek Leech in here. I've got a couple packs of the uh, Biospawn Plasma Tails. A couple different colors. And then I've got um, a couple colors of the Robo Worm. Um, what do they call this? The fat. I don't know what they call it, but this is like their finesse worm uh, in the fat version. So um, 
Anyway, most of these baits do not keep very well in their original packaging. So I like to load them into these flambeau containers that are uh, a little bit smaller. You, know, you guys have seen that I use these for a lot of different types of baits. Recently just transferred all my chatter baits into a couple of these. And um, yeah, so that is first on the list is the three and a quarter inch finesse slammer. Recommend you check them out. They retail for like five bucks a pack, so reasonable. Um, not crazy. Next up is the Missile Baits Quiver in the 4.5 inch. I do have a pack of the 6.5 inch, which is an awesome Nico rig bait. I think made specifically for the Nico rig, but this four and a half inch is a bit more versatile in terms of what you can do with it. Um, I think it's going to be awesome on a drop shot. Still great on a Nico rig. Just uh, going to rig that a little bit lower on the bait. Um, and of course, you could throw it on a shaky head. But where I see myself potentially using this is rigging it with the tail up and down and threading it on a chatterbait. So um, I haven't tried that, haven't heard anybody talk about it, but that kind of came to my mind immediately when I saw this bait. So I think I've got two packs of this bait in this package. And, uh, and these come eight to a pack. So excited to have them in the four and a half inch because I didn't already have them. Kate Stevens, what's up, man? Um, okay, next up is a bait that I've never tried before. And these are the Venture Lures uh, Swim Baits. This is the three and a quarter inch Bonville Swim Bait in the real shad color. I actually uh, watched a live stream from the guys at Omnia Fishing somewhat recently. Oh, wow. That smells very garlicky. Um, and they were really talking this, these baits up. Adventure Lures is a company that I'm really not familiar with, but decided to give a shot since they were 25% off. So I want to say these were like five bucks a pack minus 25% off became a bit more justifiable. So this is a finesse swim bait, but look at that that squared off tail that doesn't want to stop moving for me. These are hand poured and like I said have a really strong garlic scent to them. So I see myself just throwing these on a little one eighth, three sixteenths, or maybe quarter ounce ball head jig. And um just just reeling it straight through the the middle of the water column and uh kind of working this into my arsenal of finesse swim baits i really like this size the 3.25 or 3.3 inch uh, kai tech this is essentially what it looks like these are two very unconventional colors the black cherry and electric june bug also throw the 3.3 inch um, or I guess they call it the 3.25 in the rage swimmer and uh, and a couple other baits I want to say that this Beast Coast Chaos X that's a 3.65 inch so anyway finesse swim baits are the deal and I'm excited to try these I'll let you know what it's like once I have a chance to try them but just based on first impressions I like it. Okay, next up we got two frogs. I let you guys know that this is a little bit of a loophole um, in Omnia's, uh, the way that they've got their site structured. So they consider hollow body frogs uh, soft plastics on their website. So as part of their 20% off deal, hollow body frogs were included. And believe it or not, before the 25% off, they had, I want to say, the best deal online for the Spro Bronzei Shad, uh, Bronzei Pop, rather. This is the 60 size, half ounce um, popper frog. These come with the 
Gamakatsu double hook. What I like to do, um, you know, they're relatively soft straight out of the pack. This is one of my favorite popping frogs, especially because the hooks um, are solid, not too big, but they stay perfectly flush with the bait. And, um, and this bait is pretty durable for a soft plastic frog. So, um, or for a hollow body frog. Typically speaking, hollow body frogs are not that durable. You know, if you can get 10 to upwards of 20 fish on a single bait, that would be considered good. So, um, this one sits at about the, uh, the top end of the durability scale. So, I've got some of these in black, and um, let's see here. I think I've only got two colors currently. This is like the Rainforest Black, and this is, I want to say, uh, Freak, something like that. And um, what I've found is that if you let these sit somewhere warm, like the dashboard of your car uh, or on the deck of your boat or um, anywhere that's just a little bit warmer, these baits will, will soften up significantly. You know, straight out of the pack, they're soft-ish, but not nearly as much as after you let them warm up and soften up a little bit. So, again, this is one of my favorite popping frogs. You know, the black has a, a red cup face. The I think Freak has a chartreuse cup face. And um, wanted to add a couple more colors to the arsenal while I was at it. And, uh, and they had such a killer deal on these frogs. So let me just double check for you how much these were. They retail at eight seven nine, and you can subtract twenty five percent from that. So pretty wicked, you know. At at like seven bucks a frog, had to get them because I want to say they retail for like ten bucks everywhere else. Got one more of those. This in the killer gill color. I'll go ahead and pull it out just so you can see it because it is quite a bit different than those others that I showed you. So this guy has more detail along the sides, silvery, uh, green back, silver bottom, uh, more of an orange um, cupped face, and some detail on the side. You get that blue and black and purple skirt, and, uh, and that's a solid one. So this one's a little bit softer straight out of the pack than this white or albino color i'm not sure what they call it yep albino and killer gill so at seven bucks a frog had to get two of them sorry to say i'm not going to throw those in a giveaway for you guys okay next up is the zoom beatdown i've talked about this bait with you guys before nixie you gotta try frogs man for sure there are a couple different types of frogs that you can try. I'm not going to dig these out, but you can get soft plastic toads, um, you know, solid body frogs that are, that you'd fish more like a buzz bait that are going to kick on the surface. Um, you're not going to stop and walk them you the way you would with a hollow body, but you can throw those on um, like a swim bait style hook. and. Uh, like here's here's a good example of one right here. This is the Kitek uh, Noisy Flapper. This is one of my favorites. You know, Zoom makes the Horny Toad, and uh, Rage Tail makes the uh, Rage Toad. Like I said, this is the Kitek Crazy Flapper. So you get a ton of kicking action out of it, and you can rig it on a swim bait style uh, weedless hook. Like I said, and just swim it straight through the cheese. Um, I don't have a great screw lock close by to show you how to rig it, but anyway, pretty straightforward. You'd use a four or five aught screw, screw lock into the nose and then rig it weedless. This bait is has tons of detail. So if you use a single hook, it's got a line right down the middle for you to tuck it in. If you use a double frog hook, 
you can tuck it right into these guys. It's made for that. And then cool thing is, this actually can double as like a cross style bait if you wanted to use it as a jig trailer. So, Kitek Noisy Flapper is a good one. But anyway, the Zoom Beatdown. This is a sleeper of a Ned Rig bait and a drop shot bait. This is a little bit larger than is typical for a Ned Rig bait. This is a three and a half inch soft plastic worm. And just like the Magnum Finesse Worm, what I love about this is it has a very low salt content. So this thing is relatively um, neutrally buoyant. I would not say that it is buoyant. It doesn't stand up um, all the time, but it will stand up sometimes. And because it's three and a half inches, it has a surprisingly good wacky rig action. So Throw this on a wacky rig on a drop shot, sleeper. Throw this on a Ned rig, just trim down the, the nose of the bait a little bit to make it more like a standard size Ned rig. And, uh, and this is a really good bait. So this color here is called Houdini. I've already got one in the green pumpkin, purple and gold flake. And I got, believe it or not, I got three packs of these guys. So the other color that I got is called Electric Shad. And this is one that I'm really excited about, especially on that drop shot I was talking about. So very transparent, but shad profile. It's lighter on bottom than it is on top, and it's got a lot of purple flake in it. That's probably the color that I am most excited about. And therefore, I got two packs of it. And lucky you, this pack go to one of you guys. I'm going to throw it in, I think, next month's giveaway or an upcoming giveaway. So, Riley, I'm super sorry that I haven't got in touch with you about giveaway items and, um, and all of that that we had been talking about recently. And that's my bad. You're right, Justin. Everybody's quiet tonight. There's six people in here right now. If you haven't hit the thumbs up button, that hasn't changed in the last 10 or 20 minutes. There's 10 thumbs up. Do me a solid. Hit that thumbs up, guys. Yeah, me too, Justin. Okay. As I said, I've got one more pack of the Missile Baits Quiver. Five. Gosh, I really hate how twisted up these are in the pack. So just for my own peace of mind, I'm going to kind of fix them, but these are a little bit messed up. So um, here's what it looks like when it's messed up, and that annoys me. This is why I have a lot of respect for, um, you know, X-Zone and what I said that they were doing by putting their baits in a clamshell. Why doesn't John Cruz and his team go ahead and put some of their baits in clamshells because honestly I don't like the way that this looks or is going to act in the water when that tail is just bent right in half that's annoying to me makes me want to either boil it and straighten it back out or store it in a different container or cut the tail off altogether and fish this just like I would the zoom beat down and just a tailless bait. Um, so that's annoying. Anyway, that's how it is. So this color is one that I'm excited about though. And this is called the Bammer Craw. And it's an orange, really good crawfish imitator. So fish is on the bottom on that Nico rig when you're around crawfish. And uh, also doubles as a good bluegill imitation. So I'm going to have to fiddle with these after the stream but they are all messed up in the pack and that's disappointing and boy oh boy these missile baits all of their baits quite honestly have a really strong scent to them um that smells like anise or um black licorice i guess you could say really stinky all right more X-Zone lures. This is the 
25 muscle back finesse craw. Never tried this bait. Um, this is in the summer craw color. Ooh. Okay. So green pumpkin top, chartreuse bottom. And this guy here reminds me a lot of like the Berkeley chigger craw. Okay. So it's got a solid body and these larger flapping craws or uh, claws, I should say. There's just a little bit of a flange on them. I'm not sure how well you can see that. So they are going to have some action as they kick, but this smaller three and a quarter inch size is going to be perfect as a jig trailer primarily. But what I understand about these X-Zone lures, soft plastic, is that they are rather buoyant. So this guy should stand up quite well. And um, I think it's going to do well on a Ned rig or on a shaky head or as a jig trailer. And um, yeah, it seems like the options are a little bit endless with them. And um, you know what's cool is these don't come in a clamshell like those finesse slammers. But look at how well they're packed. I mean, it's like somebody who puts in the bag actually cares about how they're stored and how they show up to the customer. So right on. I got nothing but respect there. Ron Holly says, I just need to get out fishing. Still in lockdown in Cali. Dang, dude. No opportunities to get out? That is brutal. Justin says, fortunately for me, they never closed fishing here in Wyoming. Good for you, man. All right, let's see here. Another X-Zone Lures 4-inch Adrenaline Bug. This is a different bait. Again, packaged very well, though it's not a clamshell. So X-Zone seems to carry about, or care about that, and, um, and I like that. So this is a beaver style creature bait it's got a thin yet um bulky body a couple side appendages that could be removed if you wanted to but um they they tend to be forward facing and then the tails or or claws if you will are really thin and they come attached so you could separate these if you want or leave them together and you're going to get a little bit of a different action depending on what you do. So this bait is going to be awesome for flipping, just straight up, very few appendages along the sides. And um, so this is going to come in and out of cover very easily. I can see this being wicked on a swing head, um, a Tokyo rig, and also as a jig trailer. Texas rig could do a lot with this bait. And as I said, it's got a pretty wicked scent, not nearly as strong as the missile baits, but it does have a little bit of a similar, similar scent with that um, black licorice, but they've got kind of a, uh, a unique or exclusive scent to X-Zone lures. So golly, I got one more pack of X-Zone lures, and this again is the 3.25 inch so same bait that I showed you as the first thing in this box, but this is a different color, and it's called Melon Temptation. Me too, Justin. You know, Ron, if you don't have an idea about that kind of stuff, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I truly believe that the little details matter and that a, a fish can tell when things look and move a little bit more naturally and when they look messed up. So this color here is more natural. This is a, a real smally killer here. It's like a watermelon black flake top and more of a natural uh, bluish hue bottom. Nothing too fancy, no other flake in there. It's really just a black pepper. So. Um, this is more of a, a watermelon, and the other one um, just has a little bit more going on. So two packs of these drop shot baits, those were the most 
uh, exciting to me from X Zone, but I wanted to try a couple of their other baits. That muscle back craw, um, I've heard a lot of good things about, so wanted to try it and just decided to go for the smaller size. And then the adrenaline bug, I know, is a good flipping bait. So it only comes, I think, in the one uh, four inch size. So got two more packs of soft plastics in here, and I'm really just restocking. Here's the Kitech Easy Shaker in the 4.5 inch. This is the same essentially that Justin is getting, but this is a green pumpkin as opposed to the um, electric bluegill that I think is my favorite color. This is out of my personal stash, not your package, Justin. But look at the action on this worm. The cool thing about this bait, aside from its dual density soft plastic, meaning that um, it's heavier on bottom than it is on top, so it always wants to sit horizontally like this, even on a shaky head, it's only going to go at about a 45. This thing doesn't want to stand up, but it doesn't want to fall down either. So really awesome bait. This electric bluegill has two different colors, top versus bottom, and has some flake in it, blue and green flake. But I don't have any in the standard green pumpkin color. I've got some at electric bluegill and then some in like a uh, uh, pro red to pearl color. And I like those both. But last thing in the pack is a package of Zoom Magnum Finesse Worms. It's in the red bug color. I actually don't use red bug very much, but I'm trying to get into red as much or more than, uh, than purple. So I've always thrown June bug a little bit more than red bug, but want to try some red bug and see if I don't get any better results. So very similar color to June bug in terms of that green flake in there, but you get a red base instead of purple. And it's my understanding that fish see the color red better than they do blue and purple. So um, I'm going to put that theory to the test, see how it goes. As we said, or as a uh, as a few of us were saying, Aaron and I, the Magnum Finesse Worm is an awesome wacky rig bait. But the cool thing about it is it has a flat bottom. So makes it just that much more versatile of a bait on, say, a drop shot or a shaky head. Um, and especially a wacky rig being flat on the bottom. It's got that bulbous tail. And uh, yeah. It's a bait that everybody needs to have and throw a little bit more. I want to say I've got it in like five different colors at this point. Dark Real Action, what is up, man? Doing quite well. Thank you for asking. How are you? George Goins, what's up, man? Five people in here, 12 thumbs up. Dark Real Action and George, hit that thumbs up if you haven't already, man. Do me a quick solid. So I'm just going to quickly run through these again. One pack of the Magnum Finesse Worms in the Red Bug. One pack of the Zoom Beat Down in the Houdini color. Um, I got two packs of the Beat Down in the Electric Shad. One for you, one for me. I got two packs of the X Zone Lures three and a quarter inch Finesse Slammer. One in the Big Limit color. And one in the Melon Temptation color. One pack of the X-Zone Lures three and a quarter inch Muscleback Finesse Craw in the Summer Craw color. And one pack of the X-Zone Lures four inch Adrenaline Bug in Green Pumpkin. Two packs of the Missile Baits half inch Quiver. One in Green Pumpkin, one in Bammer Craw. One pack of the Kitech Easy Shaker 4.5 inch in green pumpkin. And two Spro Bronze Eye Poppin' Frogs. One in the Albino, one in the Killer Gill color. All of that for like 55 bucks. So pretty tough to beat, guys. And that does it for that. Oh, aside from one more thing, pack of the Venture Lures 3 and a quarter inch. 
hand poured swim baits. These are called the Bonville swim baits in the real shad color. So pretty tough to beat that deal, guys. I've got stinky hands at the moment, so I'm not going to try and touch my computer too much, but I'd be happy to, to open up the conversation, talk about what it is that you guys might want to talk about. If you have questions about any of those baits that I just showed you, any of the baits that I opened and showed you last week, or anything behind me, um, or just anything in general, I'd be happy to answer if I can. I'll let you know if I uh, don't have an answer for you. But Ron says, hey, you've caught bass. I will defer to you. <laughs> um, you're talking about my OCD and bass being picky about kinked up tails and baits like that. Yeah, it's it's partially my opinion. Um, but yeah. Anyway, George says, what were those baits for? You know, they're they're for different applications. So obviously, hollow body frogs, pretty straightforward uh, for fishing thick, heavy cover. Uh, thick grass and lily pads, mats in the summertime. Of course, you can fish frogs in open water, but finesse swim baits, I'm just going to throw on like an, an exposed hook jig head. Um, I don't believe these have belly slits or are made for um, you know belly weighted swim bait hooks to be weedless. So I'm just going to throw that on, on an exposed ball head jig. Um, like the owner. Two jig heads that I, I really use more than anything are the owner round ball. I think this is the either the 1 8 or the 3 16 This has a 2 aught hook on it. And the VMC, I forget what they call this, but same size, same deal. I think this is a 1 8 and maybe a uh, 2 aught or 3 aught hook. So. Uh, those are really what I use for finesse swim baiting most of the time, unless I'm fishing around really grassy areas. Now, the Kitek Easy Shaker, like I mentioned, is awesome on a drop shot, awesome on a Jika rig, like was in my giveaway that Justin won. And uh, the Missile Baits Quiver 4.5 is really made. For the Nico rig, this is a downsized version of the larger 6.5. And like I mentioned earlier, I actually see myself trying this on a chatterbait as a trailer, uh, rigging it so the tail is vertical. And um, of course, you can throw this on a drop shot, on a shaky head, and on a Nico rig like it was made for. The X Zone Finesse Slammers are a drop shot bait through and through. The Zoom Beatdown is a Ned Rig bait, but does killer on a drop shot, especially a wacky rig on a drop shot, because it's just a little bit larger at three and a half inches. The Magnum Finesse Worm is an awesome wacky rig bait, shaky head bait, Nico rig bait, a um, lot of things you can do with it. And um, the X Zone Lures Adrenaline Bug. Is really a flipping bait, but I see myself using it on a Texas rig or on a wobble head. You know, more so a bottom bouncing, bottom fishing uh, presentation. And the muscle bag craw is a jig trailer. Um, could be thrown on a Ned rig or on a small shaky head, things like that. It is a little bit more buoyant. Those claws are made to stand up. So hopefully that answers your question. George. And again, I've got stinky fingers. So, uh, what do you guys want to talk about at this point? We're 49 minutes in. Let me uh, quickly check how my nuggets are doing because I'm nervous. And, um, ooh, okay. We won. Let's freaking go, baby. 110 to 101. That is huge. Series. We're playing the LA Clippers, who kind of hard to uh, argue that they're the favorite. They are a better team than we are, but 
during these playoffs, our offense has showed up. Jamal Murray is hot as you know what. And um, so we came out swinging and had like 45 points in the first quarter tonight, which was awesome to see. And uh, we held on to that lead for the entire night, even up the series at one apiece. When we were playing the Utah Jazz uh, last week, we went down 3-1 and ended up winning the series. Super rare that that happens. Colorado Avalanche almost did the same thing in hockey against the Dallas Stars and lost in Game 7 in overtime last night. That was a devastating loss, and, uh, and I was pretty cranky last night. That's part of why I didn't hop on and do a live stream. Um, plus, I was watching Kevin Baxter, Bateman TV. Um, unbox some JDM lures. So tell me what you guys want to talk about. Everybody's quiet in the chat right now. There's only six people in here. Um, and if you guys aren't going to want to hang out and chat much more, then we can just end this sooner than later. And I'll plan on hopping back on Monday night to talk about something more specific. Um, but you let me know. I've got way too much sitting out here on the table that I don't want to show you. And um, my bait room is crazy disorganized at the moment. I'm still very excited about the stuff that I picked up from Tackle Warehouse last week, um, even though it was before the deal going on right now. You, know, you can get these Six Cents Vega Frogs. I think they're still in stock right now. The Jackal Teera. In this red frog color is still in stock, as well as one other color that I'm thinking about picking up right now. And um, the Jackal Gavacho color, or frog in the black gill color. These are all frogs that I didn't already have in my arsenal and are a little bit, um, not necessarily higher end, because the Kara is like 10 bucks, the Gavacho is like 12 bucks, the Vega frogs 12 or 13 bucks. So uh, they're not outrageously expensive. Uh, just a little bit more than, uh, than, say, average. You know, like I said, these these Spro Poppin' Frogs, I think retail for about 10 bucks, and they're cheaper on Omnia fishing. So, George, I picked up this package uh, that I just unboxed for you at Omnia Fishing. So, uh, O-M-N-I-A. They're an online retailer out of Minnesota. And um, they've got a pretty good selection and um, great customer service. So I do recommend them. But Tackle Warehouse is probably the most um, most commonly used online retailer. I don't have any affiliation with them whatsoever. And um, they've struggled to keep a lot of stuff in stock during the pandemic. My favorite place to shop, and I am biased because I work with them, is discounttackle.com and um, they're a great place to buy online tackle. Um, certain brands are discounted, certain brands are not, and that's going to fluctuate over time. But that is where I would always recommend checking first to see um, if they have what you're looking for. And then if not, I'd go to Tackle Warehouse. But um, at certain times of the year, Omnia Fishing, like last week, when they were just doing 25% off of soft plastics with no minimum uh, price in order to get that deal, then I go out of my way to make a purchase. So, you know, right now you got to spend a hundred bucks in order to get 25 off this weekend. So I don't necessarily recommend doing that unless you're prepared to spend 75 bucks on baits, but otherwise um, it would be a good deal. If, if you're willing to spend 75, kind of have a, uh, a wish list. You spend that 75 bucks, you're gonna get a hundred dollars worth of baits and free shipping. So check that out. Check out Tackle Warehouse, where almost everything except for you know brands like Mega Bass that that have manufactured advertised prices uh, that cannot be adjusted or discounted. Uh, everything on the site is 15% off. So it's a good time to make a purchase on Tackle Warehouse uh, if you're gonna spend 50 bucks, get that free shipping. So Ron says, I can't wait to get out and try some of this stuff, but for now, I'm a bassless chap. Sorry to hear that, Ron. Um, 
you have any idea when the lockdown is going to be lifted? And is it still because of the fires or um, is it because of the pandemic? Like, uh, what exactly is the deal, Ron? And um, and what's the plan moving forward, man? Because that is brutal. Justin says, I spent way too much money on tackle this week. Got myself a new BFS combo and spent 150 at Tackle Warehouse on a bunch of plastics and terminal. Dang, dude. Uh, BFS is a deal. Good for you. I actually don't have a BFS combo myself, but a couple of guys that I follow, uh, specifically online outdoorsmen, Ethan, um, he is now a brand ambassador over at Discount Tackle. I really like his stuff. He's a kayak fisherman and loves finesse fishing, especially for panfish. Uh, he loves catching crappie and sunfish and um, bluegill and just small fish on small baits. He's a Ned Rig fisherman. And um, so I think he's got like the Shimano Aldebaran as his BFS real and then the other dude is roar rar fishing w a sorry r a w r and i think his name is jimmy and uh he's huge on bfs he's he's got a relationship with cast king though so um i'm pretty sure his combo that he uses for bfs is from cast king uh, if you don't mind me asking what bfs combo did you pick up and uh and from where was it from tackle warehouse or elsewhere man and guys fire off some questions in the comments let me know what it is that you guys want to talk about or baits that you have questions about because i've got a million things rigged here and um i've got knowledge that i want to share but i don't want to just go off on random tangents so um you tell me what you want to talk about if anything specifically George says, what is your number one overall lure? Dude, I try not to have a go-to lure, but I'll go ahead and tell you right now. Chatterbait is probably my top lure in terms of what I use. Um, and the jackhammer chatterbait is probably what I throw the most and recommend the most. Um, this Bee Height Delight color, Jackhammer Chatterbait, is probably what I, uh, what I toss most frequently. I think I've got like four or five of them in my box right now. The, I've got a bunch of green pumpkin ones. I've got a few of the Heights Hot Craw, a few of the Fire Craw, a few black and blue, a couple of Pearl White and Green Pumpkin Shad, one of my favorite colors. That's this guy right here. So the Jackhammer Chatterbait is probably my number one lure but um but i throw the thunder cricket i throw about 10 other z-man chatterbaits and um and i throw bladed jigs that are not made by z-man as well so i am very knowledgeable in the bladed jig and chatterbait department if you've got any questions about that specifically But I like to throw a bit of everything, George, so I don't just default to the jackhammer chatterbait, though I do kind of always have one tied on, and I do have a dedicated setup for chatterbaits. But I also throw lipless crankbaits on the same setup. I will throw some, uh, I'd like to say finesse swim baits, but it's really uh, kind of mid sized swim baits or weedless, smaller swim baits if that makes any sense justin says have you ever checked out the real test yes i have uh, it's very dense material in my opinion so um, i don't watch it all that frequently but if i am doing research 
on reels, uh, then yeah, absolutely. I think he's super knowledgeable and definitely a geek uh, when it comes to that stuff. So, you know, I can't stand to sit through an entire video of his, but like his stuff for sure. So uh, you say from Japan, Shimano Scorpion BFS. Right on, dude. Nice choice. And for the rod, got the Doomsday Tackle Bait Finesse Custom Casting Rod. Cool. I'm not as familiar with that rod, but of course I know Doomsday Tackle and uh, did see recently that they had a deal going on. I think free shipping on like any rod that you order. So right on. Sounds like a great combo, man. Hope you enjoy that. Super into JDM tackling techniques. Yeah, I hear you, Justin. I kind of am too. Uh, just try to limit it somewhat uh, because it gets pricey rather fast. But I've got a fair amount. Ron Holly says it's the virus here in California. They can't get out of their own way. Man. Yep. Uh, some places have definitely been like that, kind of up and down. And thinking... Uh, that they're over the hump and then regress a bit, you know, and it is that time of year, one with school starting back up two with it being Labor Day weekend. It will be interesting to see what happens uh, nationwide here in the next couple of weeks. I would not be surprised if there are some big spikes in a lot of different places. So um, sorry to hear that, man. My guess is that because it's a lockdown, that uh, it's not very easy for you to get out and that you could certainly be written a ticket or get in trouble if you're caught um, going out, especially doing something recreational like fishing. So um, sorry about it, man. What other questions you guys got? Justin, yeah, it gets very spendy. No doubt about it. Uh, when when the average lure is 15 to 25 bucks, uh, it adds up quick, man. So JDM, you often get superior quality, especially when it comes to the terminal, you know, the stock hooks that come on the baits, but you do have to kind of pay attention to what is what. Um, you know, there are some things that are not always worth it, like tackle. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about a lot of the stuff that they make. Um, but a lot of the different brands, you know, I'm a Katsu, OSP, of course, Mega Bass, um, all make really high quality stuff. I think a few brands that are really underrated are IMA Lures and um Yozuri. those are very affordable for what they are lucky craft also is just generally speaking a very high quality brand and whether or not you know this they produce lures for a lot of the other jdm manufacturers well i shouldn't say manufacturers so much as um brands so no worries riley uh, we have been on here for an hour and five minutes, and I'm a bit hunched over. And um, even though I'm wearing the back brace, my back is starting to wear down. So I want you guys asking questions in order to keep the conversation going. Otherwise, I'm going to cut this off uh, sooner than later because I did hop on a little bit late tonight. Like I said, I will hop on again on Monday evening, most likely. I would be happy to take uh, any recommendations that you guys might have about specific techniques or baits uh, that you want to talk about but for now throw any and all questions at me and um and let's just keep the conversation going for a little bit longer i'd be happy to talk about um, a few of the things that i posted about recently we did talk about the jackal eye shad combined with the mega bass okashira screw head right this is essentially like a soft plastic spy bait system that i've got rigged up and ready to try out a little bit oversized on the hook on the the okashira screw head but really excited to try this out 
Uh, the iShad was a bait that I didn't really already have, haven't ever tried. The body is a lot like the Jackal Rhythm Wave swim baits that I've got here. I've got a couple packs of them in their larger sizes, the four and a half and the, well, 4.8 and 5.8 inch. But this iShad was a bait that existed then was discontinued and then came back onto the market like last year. So cool drop shot bait, but also in Japan, they really use this bait as a finesse, straight reel, do nothing style bait. Um, and if you guys didn't know that, that is a very common uh, way of fishing in Japan because their bodies of water are so pressured. A lot of times they're just going for dead action small tiny baits or the opposite end of the spectrum and are throwing giant baits with more aggressive action but in terms of uh like what we like to throw here um they're kind of beyond that so you don't see as much with a standard american style fishing uh the way that we do a lot of power fishing uh, is less common over in japan just because they have fewer places to fish and um, and all those bodies of water are more pressured. Riley says, "Can you talk about Kitek baits?" Absolutely. Um, Justin says, "The Yozuri Pins Minnow is one of my favorite small jerk baits, just ahead of the HD Trout." Right on, dude. Um, me too. I've actually got those upstairs in my backpack. I have them uh, in the same box, and um, I throw them both a lot. What I like about the Pins Minnow is it's a floating jerk bait. And the HD Trout is a is a sinking bait, but I like the action on it just a bit better. So, you're absolutely right. The HD Trout's probably my favorite and the Pins Minnow is a uh not in a close second, but um it's definitely in my top 5 um along with a few others, especially in the floating jerk bait category, but I throw those almost exclusively for panfish and trout. So uh, caught a couple on the HD trout uh, this past week. I actually did record a few of my adventures. I caught a ton of fish on the Rebel Cricket Hopper, which is not a jerk bait. You know, it's a tiny little crank bait uh, that's a floater. It will crank down some 6 to 12 inches, but um, is a wicked bait. They make it in a couple of versions, one with a large single hook that's barbless and then one with uh, two tiny trebles on it and that was killing it for me uh, they weren't quite eating it well enough to get the single barbless uh, larger hook on the back but what i did was pinch down the barbs on those tiny trebles and um uh, and i slayed them so caught brown trout rainbow trout and brook trout uh, probably you know 30 or so over the course of two days, uh, just a few hours per day of fishing. So really successful there, and you'll see that coming up. So Riley says, can you talk about Kitek baits on the next slide? Sure. Um, we can talk about it now if you want, or we can talk about it later. Um, it doesn't look like I have a lot of Kitek baits, but I do. They go all the way down here. I've got their tubes. I've got their uh, their long U-tail style worms. I've got some of their drop shot baits. This is a really unique bait, the Shad Impact. I've got a ton of their crazy flappers. I've got the noisy flappers. I've got the easy shaker drop shot baits. And of course, I've got almost every size of their swing impact fat swim baits. So, uh, yeah, that would be a great topic for us to talk about is just Kitek baits in general because their soft plastics are kind of second to none. But for whatever reason, uh, in this day and age, people that are getting into JDM lures and even soft plastics um, act like. Kitek is not JDM just because it's been available in the U.S. for quite a bit longer. But uh, they make awesome baits through and through. Uh, very salty and soft. 
and therefore not super durable, but that is going to be the case across the board with JDM soft plastics. And for what you get, I would say Kitech is a little bit better value than the majority of the other brands that you'd be checking out. So especially some of the newer ones on the market, like Geek Crack, um, they're able to charge an absurd amount for what you actually get. So yeah, that, that's a pretty good idea, Riley. And um, I'd be happy to throw that into the mix, um, if not make that like the main topic of the next live stream. So thank you for the suggestion. Justin says, yeah, I was actually just catching some decent browns on a tiny little popper and the HD trouts. Yeah, man. Brown trout are notorious for being the most aggressive type of trout and therefore uh, likely to hit artificial lures as opposed to flies. Uh, rainbows and brookies can be a little bit more timid, especially wild trout as opposed to stocks uh, or stalkers, I should say. But um, yeah, tiny poppers and, and uh, small jerk baits are a great way to catch them. Ron says, how about the that stream on all the different beaver baits? Um, that could be a good option. Although I will say I throw craw baits a lot more than I do beaver baits. But that said, I, I still have a decent amount of beavers um, and bugs that would be good to talk about. Um, you know, from the rage bug to the bandito bug to the Z craw to the reaction innovation man bear pig and the zoom brush hog and of course the zoom lizard to the Kai Tech crazy flapper and the reaction innovation spicy beaver. I could talk about them for sure. Uh, it's just, I, for whatever reason, I throw craws more than beavers. But, um, yeah, that's a good suggestion as well, Ron. Thank you for throwing that into the mix. Any other suggestions or questions that you guys have at the moment? Any questions about baits that you can see or can't see? I'm going to post about uh, this swim bait here on Instagram in the next day or two. And I wonder how people are going to react. You guys probably remember me opening this like a month or two ago. I haven't had a chance to throw this yet, but this swim bait is wicked and uh, is lesser known. So this is an Imakatsu JDM lure that, um, you know, even though Mega Bass is considered JDM, the, uh, The Magdraft Freestyle, I don't know if it would be considered JDM or not because it's so readily available in the U.S., but I think it still falls into that category. Um, you know, all the Mega Bass baits do, but this Imakatsu Stealth Swimmer is wicked. Um, so it comes in. Uh, two to a pack, and they come in a clamshell, which I really like. They come in, in two separate clamshells, but what I think, and I'm not positive, I might have to look at this. I think they come with two different internal weights. So what makes this different than, say, the Magdraft Freestyle is it comes pre-rigged with a hook in there. But it's weedless. So watch what happens when you set the hook. That hook just comes right out. Now it is um, the weight is built into the bait, just like the mag draft, not the freestyle. But this is weedless, and. It's on a magnet system too. So there's a magnet in the belly of the bait here. So when that hook goes in, it stays in. And then when you set the hook, it comes right off the magnet and jumps up into the mouth of the fish. So uh, really cool system there. 
and um, a bait that I hadn't seen before. But from a profile standpoint, it is almost the exact same as the Magdraft Freestyle. You know, the fin is placed in a different spot. And this has very similar bottom fins. So extremely similar. A little bit more aggressive of a tail. So the kick is going to be uh, a little bit more aggressive. You can swim this at slower speeds. And, of course, you can throw it in thick cover. But depending on how you rig the mag draft freestyle, you can throw it in super thick cover. But I think the hookup ratio is going to be better on the Imakatsu Stealth Swimmer. So, anyway, that's one that I am uh, pretty jacked about at least to give a shot. It's possible that this this hook might come out a little bit more easily than you'd want and uh, and you'd get this thing hung up, in which case that would be disappointing because it is relatively expensive. But anyway, Justin says, actually going to hit the sack, bro. I'm trying to get out for a few hours tomorrow before it gets hot. Another awesome live, Tyler. Have a good night, bud. Hey, no worries, Justin. Thank you so much for joining and hanging out tonight. And one more time, congratulations on winning the giveaway, man. I'll get that out to you later in the week. But hopefully I see you on Monday night uh, if you are available. So good luck on the water tomorrow, man. Have a great rest of your weekend. Happy Labor Day. Um, and, uh, and I'll see you on Monday night, man. So I am trying to pack this back up. Any other questions? I think I'm going to dip out of here along with Justin. We've been streaming for an hour and 17 minutes. And, uh, and it's pretty typical for me to say I'm going to hop out of here and then stay on for about another 30 minutes or so. So, you know, if you guys do have questions and want to keep uh, keep this running, by all means, feel free and, and ask away and I'll answer your question. Otherwise, um, I'm going to hop out of here in just a moment or two. There's only five people in here. 13 thumbs up. Appreciate you guys. If you haven't already done so, hit that thumbs up. And if for whatever reason you are not subscribed to the channel, please do me that solid. I'd really appreciate it. And, um, and I will plan on seeing you guys again very soon. So um, that does it for... This unboxing from Omnia Fishing, like I said, if you're willing to spend a little bit more money, I'd recommend that you check out Omnia Fishing this weekend because they do have that 25 off of um, $100 or more, of course, with free shipping. And then Tackle Warehouse has a 15% off uh, site-wide uh, deal. So both of those would be great places to, to shop. And then Discount Tackle, as always, is a great place to shop. And I will be placing my monthly order there here in the next few days. And um, yeah, hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Have a good day tomorrow. And I will plan on seeing you Monday night. If you have any suggestions about what you'd like to discuss, what you'd like me to show you on Monday or on a future live stream, by all means, leave a comment down below. Send me an email. Send me a message on Instagram. And I will. Uh, definitely respond. So have a great rest of your night. Have a good weekend. Happy Labor Day. And I'll see you on Monday. Cheers, guys.